I've experienced it twice. Um, the first time I worked for a major um, hotel chain, I was there for seven years before I was promoted to a position in the executive offices. And um, throughout my time there, I was promoted up and getting more and more responsibility, more and more experience that I was putting into good use. I had excellent reviews and my employee reviews and um, I was always given promotions monetary based on the good performance. So I was excited after I got my last promotion. I was there for a couple months to discover that I was expecting my first child with my husband. And I waited the customary 12 weeks that I read online that you're supposed to wait before you tell your employer that you're expecting that was uh, supposed to be outside of the danger zone. You can start letting your family know. And um, I let my employer know, let's say on the Monday, that I was expecting the baby. I was really excited. Within 10 days, I was informed that I wasn't working out, um, that I wasn't performing to their standards, uh, that they would like to uh, replace me due to my lack of performance. And I was very confused and didn't understand why, and that's the only reason that I could come up with. Um, like I said, because up until this point, everything is excellent. You know, I'm not at work on time, I'm at work early. I'm not doing my job, I'm doing mine and other people's. So it wasn't an issue of job performance. Along with that, so within the 10 days, they let me know that I wasn't working out. Um, not seven days later, I had a miscarriage, and um, I let them know, and it was a, a, a hush that went over the office. In their opinion, they believed that uh, my being told that my job was no longer viable was a reason why I had the miscarriage. I knew it wasn't. I found out later met, there were some medical issues, um, but not being able to backpedal and say, oh, well, you can keep your job now. What they chose to do instead was ask me to keep my position and continue to work until they were able to find my replacement. So uh, I was asked to keep my, my job, to stay, you know, continue to work while they interview my replacement, which is very stressful because mm -hmm. I'm there sitting watching them interview people who are going to replace me. And they wanted me to train the person. And uh, when I talked to HR, not on my initiation, mind you, HR requested a meeting with me to discuss my employment and said, well, you know, if you stay, we'll approve your unemployment benefits. But if you leave, if you quit before the March date, then we'll deny your unemployment. Of course, my choice was to keep the job because I didn't know I had a mortgage to pay, you know. So I kept the job. I watched them interview my replacements and stayed to the March date a week before my replacement was to start so they wouldn't have um, any gaps in having coverage. Uh, I contacted EEOC, I contacted independent law firms, and as soon as I let them know what hotel I was working for, because this is a major global international hotel chain, they said, oh, we can't help you. If EEOC would have done a subpoena for my employee record, they would have seen how many times I was written up for what, what complaints were filed against me, but they didn't bother. My second experience, I had been laid off at this point from the previous job for a while, and um, I was at home. It took me two months to find another job. How does that happen for someone who's, you know, incompetent? In that time, I also found out that I was pregnant. But this time, I knew not to say that I was pregnant. So I started a job, I worked wonderfully, everyone loved me. I um, hid my pregnancy for six and a half months. So I started the job five weeks pregnant. And at uh, six and a half months, I let 
my human resources director knows what I was expecting and my supervisor. Well, my human resources director was a female. She knew I was pregnant long before and was sworn to secrecy. We became good friends. Um, I was complimented often on my work, my work ethic. Um, I finally made the announcement that I was expecting, like I said, at six and a half months. And it was like, oh, okay, and how long? You know, I had to let them know how far along I am. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm six months. <laughs> so it was like, okay. My baby was due in February. So by December, I had a meeting. I, was, I came to work, and I was called into a meeting in the back office. Here's the human resources director, my supervisor, and the chief financial officer uh, sitting in the room with me. And I said, oh, okay, we're having a meeting. What is, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to talk about my maternity leave and what they want me to do before I leave and, you know, what uh, papers I need to fill out. Uh, my direct supervisor went on a trip to Poland and was gone for a month while I was pregnant. So, and this is my supervisor, so I was able to do her work and mine and complimented on how well I did my work. I'm in the office and they're talking and they give me a folder and it is a statement um, describing a severance package. And they're letting me know that um, they were gonna re, they were reorganizing the front office and that my position is going to be phased out which legally, if my title was receptionist, let's just say for example, or if I was office coordinator, they could change the title and say, okay, now, you, uh, now we, we no longer need an office coordinator. Now we need an administrative assistant receptionist. I, I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. It was something like seven pages, and I did refer to a lawyer again. And at this time, it was 2008, 2009. My son was born in 2009, and the economy had fallen. And the lawyer told me that there were people who were being fired for no reason all over the country. So that if I was being fired and offered a severance package, take it. He said because there wasn't a lot that he would be able to do to prove this. And because the employer did not say, I'm firing you because you're a terrible employee, you know, I would have been able to fight that. But because he said we're reorganizing the front office, that's something totally different. Mm. I no longer need a butcher. I need a meat cutter. Mm. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I don't need a florist. I need someone to water my flowers and cut them and put them in the sun. So legally, he was able to do that. It left a very bad taste in my mouth. I was determined not to be put in that position again. Um, I went to school originally for biology. I wanted to teach high school. And because I had family issues, my mom was sick, I needed to care for my siblings, I decided to work in corporate America. I was intelligent, I had skills, you know, I could type, I knew how to use a computer, so I put myself in administrative positions because that's what I could do. You just had to be smart and know how to type and know how to do, you know, have brains to do these jobs. Um, So I swore that I would not put myself in a position where I would be dependent on a company on whether or not I would have food on my table. And that's how I end up becoming a hairstylist. It's something that I always wanted to do, but my income is based on the work that I do, and I don't have anyone to fire me. I can have dissatisfied customers, but no one can fire me. The off, the off part about it is I miss vacation days. I miss sick time. You know, I miss um, the camaraderie of the corporate environment. You know, having the company gym, having access to a company pool. So it was like all of these things, it's a trade-off. And it's, it's really sad because, um, you know, we're supposed to be progressive. And yet, you know, upon doing a lot of research with other, and finding other women online who have, have had similar experiences, we're behind when it comes to pregnancy and corporations. We're all the way behind in the United States. 
every other country has so much more benefits, time off, everything than America. But we are family first. That's what we want to say. We're family first. Oh, you know, we love our family, our children. But we want you to get a babysitter when your child is five and a half weeks old and get back to work. 